Come with me, guys, as I walk the South Cheshire way. Hey, how you doing? Bit of a change of pace today. Paul has uh, taken the boy over to Crewe to see some friends, so I took the opportunity to get dropped off on the outskirts of Crewe and I'm going to try and work my way back, get some uh, training done, get some miles in my legs, uh, work it about map reading in an area I'm not too familiar with uh, and see how it goes. I'm also, uh, I've got a paper map with me, a paper, well, a printed paper map, uh, printed off at home, but uh, I'm going to try and use all my gadgets. I've got a tablet with me uh, so I can use my the OS map as much as I want, follow that as much as I want without draining my phone battery because obviously my phone battery is going to be used for recording. I've got a little SJ4000 with me, a little uh, sort of GoPro-esque camera so I'll probably do a bit of filming on that as well. Uh, but the majority of it will be done on this. So uh, I'll bring you along with me and show you what I'm up to. So to start off, we've got about probably four or five k along these footpaths. Bit of a road walk uh, out through Shannington to hopefully pick up the, the South Cheshire Way. I could go a bit further away from home to pick up the Bridal Ways a bit earlier, but uh, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, like I say, about three miles. Uh, so hopefully about an hour. I tend to walk about two and a half, three miles an hour. Uh, down through Shavington to pick up the South Cheshire Way and then hopefully we'll be off-road pretty much until I get um, within a mile or two of home. I think it's probably going to be about 10 or 12 miles, depends on exactly which route we want to take but yeah that's the plan so probably looking at four hours. I'll probably stop and have some food en route so probably looking at about four, four and a half hours. It's by having blue sky in the background. It's a little grey over, overhead and it's starting to spit. I think we may, may be in for a tiny bit of rain, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too unwelcome at the moment because it's quite muggy, quite humid. Uh, yeah, it's definitely starting to rain. So uh, a breeze would be nice, but hopefully a touch of rain will just fresh, freshen it up a little. We'll see. Just talking about navigation a short while ago. You can't really miss a feature like this on the map. Uh, you can see what a lovely bright day it is today, it's gorgeous. Uh, thoroughly enjoying it. Because it's close to home, because it's at the moment a road walk, I'm trying to push out the miles as quickly as possible. Uh, so I'm uh, a bit out of breath at the moment, a bit warm. Uh, but I'm covering the ground, I'm just leaving Shavington now, onward towards Huff. So just see a junction on the right there past where that car was, just was. Right ahead of you now. I'm going to stop in a second, just check the map and see if that's where I need to be going. A fork in the road like this is a cracking little uh, pointer as to where you are. So I'm going to have a look and make sure I don't overshoot the, uh, the junction with the uh, South Cheshire Trail. Okay. Well, as I suspected, this is uh, pit lane. Uh, this is the right hand fork that we wanted. Uh, we've got about a kilometre now to uh, to get down to the trail. Um, obviously, I'll point out when we get there. One thing I've got to be mindful of using the app, uh, using a map, a paper map, you know by eye how far something is. Uh, you look at the squares if you need to, but you know two centimetres is roughly a, 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 a kilometre or four centimetres, depending on which map you're using. You know the scale, you can eyeball it or pull the scale. Obviously with the app, you can um, zoom in and zoom out. So uh, <laughs> distance is a bit more diff difficult to judge. You have to really uh, judge it by the size of the squares. So yeah, I got here faster than I thought for because the, I uh, zoomed in so it was a bit further on the map. But yeah, just in case of being mindful while you're, while you're watching your map. Okay, we've covered roughly the right distance. I'm not sure whether it will show up on the screen yet. The uh, Mark 1 eyeball tends to be better than the, the camera lens at the moment. But there's a little finger post at the end of that driveway pointing left. I don't think it's marked for any specific path. 
and I thought the one we were looking for was a good sort of 50 meters further along after this bend so I'm going to stop and have a look at the map yeah so my instincts so my instincts took me in good stead that one is a footpath that leads up to yew tree farm which is in the wrong direction I think I probably could have cut across to the, the correct path eventually but why add on the extra miles when I don't need to uh, we're going to be heading down here for another 40 or 50 meters and I've got a left turn onto the trail hopefully it's marked okay so right in the middle there is uh, a finger post I'm hoping that's going to be the northern part of the route I want to take hopefully I'm going to be going off to the left I'll, I'll be checking the map very shortly right, just through the over the top of the hedge there I can see what looks like a signpost so hopefully once I get past it I'll be able to see the uh, the marker there the South Cheshire Way that's the, the, on that finger post Well, there's no South Cheshire Way marker on this, but it was pointing down here, so that's where I'm going to go. There you go, South Cheshire Way, that's what we're looking to follow. Unfortunately, that one's going in the opposite direction, but uh, you get the general gist. Okay, I've come across to the, the fence post just to make sure I was uh, on the route as uh, suggested, and you can see on the corner there you've got the South Cheshire Way pointing over in that direction, so uh, that's where I'm going to head. Yeah, I'm assuming that gateway in the corner there is where we're heading for. That cut right across the middle of it, so I've just rolled under that rather than going over because there is a, a battery pack down there. And it was hissing, so I didn't want to test whether it was live or not. Evidently this section of the path is not overly well walked. There's a gate in the corner there, but also over there is what looks to be a couple of stiles. So I'm going to go through the gate and then turn right and have a look at the stiles if there's no way markers on the gate. My suspicion about the styles was correct. Popped over a couple or clambered or whatever you want to consider me to do. Stumbled maybe over a couple of styles and the path showing down here now to a little brook and then uh, right until hopefully a little bridge. We'll see. Okay so the trail is quite overgrown in places. Had to uh, almost bushwhack to get through to here. Then just the other side of the stile, you've got all this extraction, all this loose gravel, all this loose dirt, sorry, which makes me wonder what's been down here, what's been working down here. And then, lo and behold, you've got a, a great big hole there, and another one over there, and another one up there. So I'm imagining we're probably on top of a badger set right now. Let's leave them in peace. Okay, I had quite high hopes for this, uh, this trail. Uh, but it seems to be in quite a state of disrepair. The only thing that seems to be giving us a clue as to the direction of the path is a line of thistles up there, so hopefully I'll follow them. And uh, they may well have been flanking the sides of a well-worn path once upon a time, but it's, yeah, it's in a state of disrepair, unfortunately. looking into this hedgerow you can see two little runs one here and one over here I wonder what's using them whether it's rabbits or uh, pheasants or what very well marked
you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. This bush is absolutely laden with blackberries. So I'm going to get a good handful, give myself some sugar for the uh, next stage of the walk before I stop for lunch. That'll do for the time being. The bush is absolutely laden. If I had a bag, I'd probably fill it so I could make a blackberry and apple crumble. Uh, but that'll do for a snack on the way. This is more like I thought we'd be doing. Over these little stiles, down the little paths. We've got a lovely little gate here and a grove down through the Cheshire countryside. Perfect. Okay, it's a little overgrown, but beautiful all the same. A real nice area. In the last mile, we've seen uh, ferns, we've seen gorse, seen uh, bamboo, believe it or not. And now we've got all these grasses and bushes. I think it's an area called Speakman's Moss. And that looks decidedly like a bee's hive, so I'm not going to get too close. I'm going to pass through in the least threatening manner I can and uh, carry on in. And here's some more fern. What a gorgeous little area. I'm glad I haven't got the point on my back down through here. Well, I think that's the first time I've unintentionally strayed from the path. <coughs> my own fault, the, uh, the path came to a, a Y here, so it diverged two different directions. And in uh, looking at the map, I thought I made a, a judgment and uh, I thought it was down behind me, but it is. I, <laughs> Out that way, behind me now. Looking at the map, I saw what I wanted to see. Uh, I failed to uh, notice that this was going away from the tree line, and that one was following the tree line. I guessed, I guessed it would be that one, and therefore I made the map fit what I wanted to see. Whereas this, looking at it, is uh, looking at it a second time is obviously the right route. Okay, so we're a little over 10k in, about six miles done. Like I say, it's probably 10 to 12 miles. We're at um, Hunsterson Lodge. Word I really have trouble with. At the moment, uh, Hunsterson House, I think, actually. Um, so we're getting back into the right territory. I'm back into uh, areas that I recognise the name of, at least. And there's a little way marker pointing to the left and another stile. This is a nice section through a cornfield. But uh, the last couple hundred metres I'm getting mithered by a fly of some description. The uh, last couple hundred metres have been up well overgrown with stinging nettles. So, uh, yeah, it does, doesn't look like it's a well walked trail. Uh, it is nice, but there's areas where you have to really believe your, your map. Follow the map and believe it because some of it just doesn't look like trail. Believe it or not, that is the trail. I'll have a dive in. There's a bit of a gap at the bottom there and I'll see if it carries on that way. It might just be overgrown but if it gets to the stage where I'm destroying the farmer's crop then I'll just turn around and see if I can skirt around it. Said about it being tough going, and uh, I'm at, believe it or not, right on the trail at the moment. I think someone's walked that way prior to me. But there's a, uh, it's knee high on me, and uh, to say it's not a very well worn track would be an understatement. Okay, I came up to higher ground to see if I could make any sense of where the uh, the trail went, the, Cheshire, the South Cheshire Way went. It's gorgeous views. And then there's just them two posts stuck up together and everyone else is single. So I've headed towards them. On the left hand post we've got a South Cheshire Way trail marker. Well worth investigating anything that looks out of the ordinary. Again, well worth coming up to higher ground. We've got a stile here. And one of 
keeping the distance in line with it. I love getting out into the middle of nowhere because it's amazing what you come across. Just walked through here, but I'm going to go back and uh, show you what I found. These old gates are old, old and rusted, obviously been open for a long while. An extended driveway. Nothing but fields in all directions. Then you're at this house, just tucked away down here. Completely overgrown, one of the front windows smashed, the back garden completely overgrown, but I'm not going to go and nose through the window because there's still lamps, there's still photos and things, obvious. Spooky. I might have to have a look at the land registry though, see who owns it and have a word with them. Let's go, this one's not too bad. Reasonable view to the right. Was a reasonable view to the left. But now we're... Uh, yeah, not far now, probably 100 metres and we meet, I think it's the 529, which is a fairly fast, fairly dangerous road, so... I have to have my wits about me on that. I think we only go about 50 metres down there. Maze path that hasn't been cut. So I think it's going to be a case of getting the uh, the app out on my tablet and just following it uh, uh, through the cornfield. Yes, we're going across this way. See left on the on the fence post, there's a little uh, yellow way marker. I guess that'll show us which way we're going. Okay, so I've just passed Orsterston Hall, was it? I can't remember. Just passed that big hall. And you can see off in the distance there, right along the horizon, the sandstone ridge. So that's the, the, uh, the ridge that the sandstone trail follows. That's where I'll be in a, a very short while. Uh, also off in that direction, probably only two miles as the crow flies is my house, so I'm, uh, I'm nearly there. As I said before, we're nearing my neck of the woods, so I've got a vague idea what it's like around this area. The South Cheshire Way is pointed in the same direction as this laid road, I guess you could call it. Uh, I've got a, I'm a bit fearful, but fairly confident that this is going to take us all the way out to the road. Which is a bit of a shame. Um, gorgeous countryside to be walking in all the same. Lovely little river, river here which is marked on the map. Gorgeous. But like I say, unfortunately, looks like I'm going to be on this uneven, bobbly, hard road all the way out to the, the actual road. Such is life. It's been a lovely walk. It appears I was wrong. We don't follow that uh, road all the way to Cool Lane. We, uh, we leave that and just follow an unmarked head, edge row, rolling under electric fences again. So we're out onto Cool Lane now, I'm probably about three, four hundred metres in that direction and I'm home. It's been a lovely walk. Uh, I'll speak to you again in a bit when I'm finished. Well that's me done for the day guys. The total distance is about 20.4 kilometres, which I think is about 12 and a half miles which isn't too bad, it took me probably about four and a half hours. The trail itself goes through some great countryside, I mean I've only done the stretch from Crewe to uh, uh, to Nantwich to Baddington where I live. Um, it's great. It goes through some great countryside but it's just not well enough used I don't think. Most of the time if you're not on a laid road or a, a, like a vehicle track there's nothing. There's no route to be to walk through, there's no route that's been trodden by other walkers. It's just not there. The way markers are okay take your map with you uh, take the app on your phone uh, make sure you check where you are regularly because most of it is, is way marked but a lot of it's overgrown so you can't see the the finger posts anymore you, uh, some of the way markers have fallen off and like i say it's just nigh on impossible to to see a trail because no one's walking it uh, the other thing is 
a lot of the styles and such like have overgrown the bushes have uh, reclaimed the styles or they've uh, rotted away and have fallen over uh, i'll see if see who's in, in charge of running the uh, maintaining the trail and suggest some work's done to open it up again because it's a gorgeous it's some gorgeous areas but, but it's just not walkable anyone that looks at that just isn't going to do it because it's it's hard work um the last few miles across uh, farmland uh, the roots through the maize haven't been cut and the uh, path where the path should be is all overgrown with, with stinging nettles. Foolishly, I always walk in shorts, so foolishly I had to try and kick my way through the nettles. And then the fields are knee-high in grass with no obvious trail, with styles you can't get over, with gates that are uh, uh, tied shut. It's, it was just hard work them last couple of miles, but all in all, great day, great route, um, great exercise some little gems along the way that you will have seen um, so I've had a great day I feel uh, like I've had a good day's exercise um, gonna have to eat, eat well now I think we've got steak and jacket potatoes this evening but I've burned the calories I, de I deserve it I'm gonna eat it um, so until next time uh, check me out on YouTube it's trail trial uh, sorry you know it's trail trials you're watching it on, on YouTube like comment subscribe on YouTube like comment share on trail trials on Facebook and then it's at Trail Trials on Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, get out and find your own trail.